Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everybody. It's Mr. Ma going to go over uh, our metal reactivity lab. So this is how a scientist will determine uh, how reactive uh, metal is compared to others on our periodic table. And as we know now, hopefully the uh, metal reactivities uh, and the reactivity of the elements is a uh, is uh, something we can determine in our periodic table in terms of trends, but this is how uh, they would know definitively if one metal is more reactive than another. So we're going to be adding some different solutions. I've got laid out, these are our metals. This is copper metal, magnesium, zinc, silver, and lead. And they're nice and shiny because I took some steel wool and uh, I shined them up, got rid of any residue, any corrosion on there. Um, and I'm going to put these solutions. These are all solutions of copper ions, magnesium ions, zinc, silver, and lead ions. And these are all actually uh, solutions of uh, like the nitrate, so copper nitrate, magnesium nitrate, and so on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some copper, one drop of copper ion on each of the metals, okay? And um, so if we have a reaction, what that's going to tell me, or how am I going to know that, is that most often we're going to look for a color change. So a color change is a really good indication that you have a chemical change. And this, chem and this color change should happen pretty quickly. Sometimes it does take a little bit. So most of the time we're going to be looking and, and seeing a, uh, uh, where uh, a little bit of a blackness usually forms. Um, we're going to take magnesium. We're going to do this for all the other solutions. All right. Do this assembly line style. Magnesium ions on there. And we need the zinc ions. Put this one right there. If you get a chance to do this lab, it's real important you don't mix the solutions. If uh, if they mix and you get a reaction, you wouldn't sure be you wouldn't be sure which ions are actually causing that reaction. Um, let's see, we're in our silver ions. and the magnesium ions. Oh, not the magnesium, I'm sorry, the lead. The lead is what I want. Grab the wrong bottle, but here we go. So most of our reactions happen pretty quickly. One reaction happens a little bit slower, um, and uh, it actually you don't see any any parts where they turn to black. Um, but what you'll see is that you'll see some bubbles. And uh, I'll see if I can zoom in here for a second. But as we look at it now, um, we're going to try to keep track of how many reactions took place, and the number of reactions with the same with the same solutions is going to tell us how reactive these metals are. So as I look at it now, it looks like we only have one reaction for the copper. And so I'm just going to put a one over here. For magnesium, we can see reaction here. Uh, it's turning uh, here and three right there. And uh, I'm going to see if I can kind of zoom in. I believe there's a reaction here, but it's just forming some bubbles. See if we can zoom in a little bit. That's uh, not letting me here, um, but um, I think there is a reaction there, and it's just a little bit harder to see. You may notice this may seem a little more clearly, but I think we should have um, all four reactions there. We have one, two, three reactions here. You have zero reactions for the silver. And we have, looks like a reaction here, although the lighting isn't very good, um, and here. 
Um, and in fact, if I were to take a little piece of paper towel and maybe kind of dab that liquid away, what you would see underneath, you see that you do have, let's see if we can see that, I'm not sure if you can or not, but there's actually a reaction that took place and there's a little bit of the uh, tarnish on the on the uh, piece of lead. So I'm going to try to pick that up without spilling everything and put it underneath the camera. So yeah, so now we can see that there is a black spot right there. So that's actually telling us reaction happened. So I think we have two, re two reactions there. So from this what we can create is called a metal activity series. So from this, from the most reactive down to the least reactive. So our most reactive metal is magnesium because it had the most reactions it had four. Um, then we had zinc, then our next one was lead, copper, had one, and then silver. All right. So magnesium had four reactions, zinc had three, lead had two, copper had one, and silver zero. So this is your most reactive down to your least reactive. Now, when we look at a metal activity series, what we want to recognize is that when a reaction happens, the metal, okay, these are the most reactive metals, the metals are donating their electrons to the metal ions in solution. So in this reaction here where copper metal reacted with silver ion, copper is donating electrons to the silver. And, um, and so that's the reaction that's happening. And so when we wipe away this liquid, there will actually be a little bit of silver on there. Kind of a neat thing. Um, something to think about too here is which metals would you most likely find in their natural form um, in nature? You know, if you went to a mountain and you uh, looked at a piece of rock, would you be most likely to find uh, reactive magnesium? Or possibly would you most likely be, or more likely to find silver in its elemental stage? So think about that in terms of their reactivity. Uh, that's about it for the lab. Um, again, what we've created here is called a metal activity series. Um, and we can use this to be able to predict whether a reaction may happen or it may not happen. Thanks for watching.